All right, guys, this is it. This is the video. Who's ready to make some carbon fiber? So carbon fiber has always been one of those things that I felt like most people feel like it's something they can't do. Now, let me preface this entire video by saying, first of all, I'm no expert. And I think there's different scenarios when using carbon fiber as far as the techniques go. It really depends on what you're trying to achieve in the end. Like, you don't need to use aerospace techniques just to make brackets or little tiny things that aren't gonna be that structural, right? I mean, there's also instances where heat is involved, so you have to kind of take that into account. I mean, for the most part, the average guy can make carbon fiber parts pretty easily uh, that have a lot of structural integrity, can withstand a lot of heat if you use the right resins, um, you know, and you don't have to have an autoclave, you don't have to, you know, have an oven, you can hand lay up. Really, you don't even have to vacuum bag all the time, it just, vacuum bagging makes a nicer, cleaner part. This episode of the Fab Forms is brought to you by Kill Fab Clothing Company. Find all the latest Fab Forms merch at killfab.com. So as most of you know, I'm trying to make a carbon fiber upper intake for this thing. And uh, got the CNC billet lower already on that. Gonna make a carbon fiber upper and made the mold in the last video. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. I'll put you a, yeah, or you can check it out after this video, but Made a mold, I just used some sheet metal, made a mold of what I wanted, and then I actually came in here and cleaned it up with uh, some, um, I just body worked it basically with some Bondo. So kind of got the seams covered, and then what I did is on the flip side, I actually Bondoed the seams on this side as well just to make it airtight. So you want this thing to be super airtight because the process that I'm gonna use in order to do this is called vacuum bagging. Now there's a couple ways to do it, and I'll kind of go through that as this video progresses. Now this mold is far from perfect. Um, you know, if you were gonna make parts, you were gonna make a bunch of parts and you needed that part to come out perfectly clean. Basically it comes out, you can wax it, buff it, and you have a perfect carbon fiber piece to sell. You wouldn't want to do a mold like this. You'd want to do one more out of some tool, uh, tool, gel coat, I guess is what they call that. So most of those molds are made uh, out of fiberglass or something like that. And then they use like a, a tooling gel coat in there, which is really hard. They can kind of body work that and make that mold perfect. That way every part comes out basically perfect. Um, you clean it up and it's ready to go out the door. Because this is just a one-off piece, uh, it's not that perfect. I, I wasn't worried about the mold itself being that perfect. So I got it as close as I could. Uh, as, as far as being smooth and clean, but I know that even if I had it perfect, um, there's a good chance that the part will come out with some air bubbles or th these little imperfections that I'm gonna have to uh, basically sand the outside of the part and then re-clear coat it anyway. And so it doesn't matter to me that this mold is perfect and I have a perfect part that comes out of it. Um, Cause I'm gonna clean it up and fix it anyway. Probably use some kind of automotive clear on it just so it'll, um, you know, be it can withstand some of the heat and the uv and that sort of stuff uh sitting out here on the open on this thing so really briefly well i'll, I'll give you an example of that so this was a part i made a while back and um you can kind of see it has some imperfections in it that i didn't really clean up that well uh, i plan to kind of do this one a little bit better than this one here but uh, you know that being said i know that the part's not going to be perfect it's more going to be more along the lines of what I got in this piece here. So let's, uh, let's kind of go over, I wanna kind of go in more detail. I've, went, I've made some carbon fiber videos in the past, um, actually was way in the past, and didn't really go into great detail as far as how I did it. And in this video, I wanna do that. So I want to kind of uh, outline the things you need and the steps, the order of steps that you'll need to take to make those parts and kind of why you need to do those things. So uh, start off with the mold. 
So first off, obviously you have to have a mold. Um, if you hadn't seen the other video, I just made this one out of sheet metal. Kind of got the negative of the part that I want to make, which is here. Just put some legs on it. Just some one by one, kind of stiffen it up a little bit. And then just sealed that thing up. And then as you can tell, I put some tape around the edge of this thing. Because what I did is I cleaned this part really, really good. Got all the grease and any kind of you know, grease off my fingertips, anything, I kind of cleaned it all off. Then I run some tape around the edges of this thing. And then I went through and put some mold release on it. Uh, basically, this is just wax. You could use, you know, basically any kind of carnauba wax would work. Um, it's just almost like a car wax in there. I went ahead and did it just because I didn't want the part itself to kind of flop any splash rust or anything. So I went ahead and put some wax on it just to kind of save it. And you want this tape around the outside because you want a nice clean piece out here for some double-sided adhesive that we'll put out here for the actual bag itself. Uh, and you don't want, you want it to stick really well so you don't want any wax or anything. Like that. Now there's another step to the mold release that I'll get to in just a minute. It's called PVA. And I'll kind of show you how that works. Right now though, let's uh, grab some of the other things that we're gonna need. And I'll kind of show you, kind of show you how that goes. So one of the things I'll do uh, as well is I'll kind of link up all of the supplies that I use in this. Um, so you can kind of go take a look and you know, see what it would cost to make your own parts. It's not terribly expensive, uh, but there is some cost associated. So we'll start off with the obvious, the carbon fiber. This is what they call a twill weave. Kind of has that uh, classic carbon fiber look. Um, they also make uh, like a plain weave, which is more along the lines of what you'd see in like fiberglass. They do that in carbon as well, and it's actually really strong. It just doesn't give the look that some people want. And so what some people do is actually put this, um, the first couple layers of this on the outside for the look, and then kind of mix it up with some other weaves. You can see here, it's that twill, twill weave that everybody knows. Now you can get this stuff in different weights as well. So you can get it like in thicker uh, weights, more toe. There's lots, I mean, there's lots of stuff you can geek out on um, when doing this carbon fiber stuff. And I'm not gonna go into that because technically this is probably not like aerospace style carbon fiber work, right? It's not, you wouldn't wanna fly an airplane uh, that's built the way that I'm about to build this. But for what I'm doing to make car parts and even this part is gonna be, have some structural issues, cause not issues, even this part's gonna have some, need some structure to it. It's gonna to need to be strong just because I'm gonna be running a, a boosted application on this motor. It's not hard to make something that's strong enough to do that. Now, you know, I'm not making wheels. I'm not making something that's gonna go under some extreme amounts of strain. So, yeah. All right, so carbon. This stuff here is what they call uh, release ply, or also referred to as peel ply. Uh, peel ply actually is a little bit different. It's more of like a fabric, and it's meant to like tear off the carbon fiber after it's done, and it leaves a nice rough, uh, like etched surface, so you could bond to it or put more layers in it. This is what they. This is more of a release ply. It's kind of a non-stick film, and if you look really careful. You might see that it's got little tiny pinholes in it. And what that's gonna do is allow some of the resin to seep through this. And I'll tell you why that's important in a minute. And then the next ingredient is this stuff right here, which is breather cloth. So this is just a cheap, um, it's almost like batting that would go in like seats. Like if you was in the upholstery business, it's almost like a batting that would go in there. Uh, this stuff's really inexpensive. And what this does is it actually allows it to breathe, hence the name breather cloth. And then, of course, if you're gonna vacuum bag, you have to have vacuum bag material. So this is the vacuum bag. Now the way that this is gonna work is just envision this carbon fiber right now is laid up in the mold. So you got the mold is the, is the white of the table. You got carbon. Most likely you're gonna have 
multiple layers of carbon kind of stacked into that mold. Then what you're gonna do is over that, you're gonna put the release. So you got the release film that goes over the carbon. Now this carbon too is gonna be saturated with resin. So it'll be, you know, two part resin that'll be mixed. Um, saturate the fibers as they go in. You wanna make sure you wet that thing out totally. And you got the release ply that goes over that. Then over that, it's gonna be the breather cloth. And then over that would be the vacuum bag material. And this vacuum bag material will then go out and be attached to the edges of that mold, which is why I have it taped off. So I can attach this to the outside. And then somewhere in this whole thing, there'll be a port. There'll be a port mounted in it that'll be attached to a vacuum um, machine, a vacuum pump. And the vacuum pump will pull all the air out of this uh, space in here. And what that's gonna do, well, it's actually gonna do two things. Uh, the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna compress this fiber really, really tight together. So it's gonna push it in against the mold really tight. It's gonna press the layers of carbon together really, really tight. And you want that stuff really, really tight to be strong. The other thing it's gonna do is it's gonna take out all the excess resin. So a part that has too much resin is very brittle. Uh, the resin by itself is, doesn't have that much strength. It's pretty brittle and it adds weight. So what you want to do is you want the perfect mixture of resin to carbon and that will pull the rest of that out. So and that's why it has the perforations in the vacuum or in the peel ply itself. It lets the resin kind of seep through these holes. It seeps through right into this breather cloth which absorbs a lot of that resin and stays there after it cures. Once it's out or once it's done, once the part's done and cured, and you go to take this piece up out of the mold, you kind of just rip off all this other stuff, you discard it, um, it'll pull out all the extra resin that you don't need. And really all that will be left is the carbon and the perfect amount of resin in that carbon. So that's the way that I'm gonna do it. And like I said, there's a couple ways to do this. There's another method called vacuum infusion. Uh, basically the same layers. There's one extra piece that goes uh, right on top of the peel ply, I believe. And it's kind of like a graded piece that, that allows more airflow and, and actual allows resin to flow through it. And what you do is instead of, you've kind of lay up all the carbon, you stack all this stuff together the same way that I did, but without resin, there's no resin. It's all dry layup. You kind of get everything right. And then same way that you have a port for the vacuum pump, you have another port on the other side that actually has a tube that feeds into a bucket of resin. And then what you do is have it clamped off, you pull vacuum on this thing, and when you release that clamp, it basically sucks the resin out of that tub and through all the fibers. And then it starts to come up out of, you know, once it starts to come up out of the piece, you clamp it back off so it can't get any more resin and it's infused, which is why it's called vacuum infusion. Uh, it's actually a really good way to do it. It's a better way to do it than the way that I'm gonna do it, mainly because you can kind of dry lay up. You can get all this carbon in there laid perfectly just the way that you want it. You can make sure everything's just right. You're not fighting time. So I'll be kind of fighting time on this deal. From the time I mix the resin, um, I've probably got maybe an hour and a half before I have to have everything done and not moving it around anymore. So with vacuum infusion, you don't have to worry about that. You can get everything laid up. You can spend hours if you need to. And then you mix the resin and then you flow it in. Um, it also is better for air bubbles too. It doesn't have, it tends not to have as many air bubbles in the, in the fiber itself when you do vacuum infusion. Um, the only reason I'm not doing it is because I've never done it and it takes more materials. It, it takes some other things that I don't have. And so I'm just gonna do it the way that I've done it in the past. And then the third way to do it that's very similar to this is what they call pre-preg. Uh, it's kind of a mixture of the both. It's got a, it's pre-pregnated uh, fibers with resin. So it has a resin in the fibers already. And the good thing about that is that the resin itself is not, is not, it needs to be heat activated in order to cure. And so you have all the time you want in the world 
to kind of lay that thing up exactly the way you want it. And then once you get it done, you basically pull vacuum on it the same way, same kind of materials, you pull vacuum on it, and then you stick it in an oven or an autoclave under vacuum, and you heat cycle that thing, and that, it cures. The, it actually allows, it releases the resin to flow and cure it. Um, and that's, that's the way that things are done in the automotive world is all pre-preg if you're making wheels or intakes or, you know, Keonaseg or, or Ford, any of those guys that are making anything in carbon, they're doing it all in pre-preg. It's really the best way to do it. The problem with pre-preg, though, is it's very expensive, for one, and you need an oven to cure it. You need an oven big enough to fit the entire mold and everything in. So that kind of eliminates it from me being able to use that process, even though it would be awesome. Maybe in the future, maybe I'll build like a, some kind of oven setup that has vacuum ports inside of it so you can just slide those molds in there. But yeah, so there you go, the three ways and then the way that I'm gonna do it. All right, so what I've done is I just took some blue painter's tape, kind of strung it down. Um, I cut out some of the breather cloth to the size I needed. So now I'm just going to go through and cut the sheets of carbon fiber. And I just put some uh, blue painter's tape on there. This just kind of controls the fibers a little bit, keeps them from unraveling. So like you can see these bare ones. I mean, this one even has something on the edge that's kind of keeping it from unraveling, but it can get out of hand if you don't. If you don't kind of contain it now the thing is about this blue tape is it's going to keep it from really contouring the way i need it so as i go to put it in the mold i'll probably have to cut it off but for now i'll keep kind of keep things under wraps So this particular roll right here is 52 inches wide. So it's 52 inches this way, and then you buy it by the linear yard, which is three foot. And I think, I think for this particular one, 52 inches by 36 inches is like 24, 28, something, something like that, 28 bucks. So it's not, you know, crazy, crazy expensive. Um, now it will take me several yards to kind of get as much as I need, but I mean, we're talking, you know, maybe under 100 bucks in carbon. All right, so it's five layers there, six. So what I want to do now is the next several layers, I wanna cut them slightly different angle. So on the carbon, if you look at it, the strands run uh, perpendicular to each other, even though it gives it like this weave look. Uh, a lot, the, most of the, you know, half the strands are running this way, the other half of the strands are running that way. Now to make a nice clean strong part, actually strong more than clean. To make a nice strong part, you want to cut some of these at a 45 and then actually alternate the layers in there. And what that's gonna do is, uh, it's gonna then give you strands of carbon going this way, this way, that way, and this way. So it's gonna be, uh, you know, more dimensions of the way that stuff runs. So I'm gonna cut a couple of these.
right, so now that I've got all the carbon cut, and so as you can tell, the, the key to this is kind of to get everything prepped and ready to go long before you start mixing resin or laying fiber. It's like the last thing you want to do. You want to make sure you're 100% ready when you're ready to do that. Um, I've actually already cut some of the foam, so I'll probably glue these together. And then the idea is that they'll lay in here, probably midways. And uh, just in between, so I got, I think I got eight layers of carbon now. I'll probably put four layers down. I'll put the foam in and put four more layers on top of that. I've also got this triangle piece I'm gonna put back here. Um, and like I said, it's just gonna give it a little bit of dimension. It's just gonna give it that little pocket, you know, of difference, that little piece of foam of difference. It'll make a large, huge difference in the way that it is able to flex or not flex. So anyway, carbon's done. Got a couple of those cut. I'll work on those later. Right now what I wanna do, I've already got wax on this thing. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, double-sided sealant. So this is like a gooey, I don't wanna say tape, because it's not really tape. It's more of like a gooey substance. Um, this is what's gonna bond the mold to the bag itself. I'm just gonna pull off this tape. said before the purpose of the tape was just to keep the wax off of this surface that way this stuff right here will stick really well it's not hard to put on you just do it like that Now, the one thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to peel the top of this off right now uh, because I've got this stuff that needs to go in here called PVA, this stuff right here. So it's just a mold release itself, it's PVA mold release liquid. So this almost makes like, um, remember when you're in elementary school and you used to put glue on your hand and then you could like peel it off like it was skin? That's kind of almost what this stuff does. It just kind of has this little film barrier that goes on there. When the mold comes out, sometimes the PVA goes with the part, sometimes it stays on the mold. The good thing is, is all of this is water soluble. So once you're done, you just rinse it all off with water, all the PVA comes off. And it's just one more step to help this thing release. Corners, you just peel back this a little bit. I just stick the new one in there. All right, now so everything's done. Everything's kind of touching each other, and like I said, because this stuff's so gooey, you can kind of push it over and do what you need to do to kind of get it stuck. Uh, one of the things I will do. Before I put the bag on is I'll put little fingers um, I'll actually make the bag oversized and I'll put some fingers in the bag using that same stuff which will give the bag more material to kind of flow into here without being stretched it'll just have all that extra material so I'll put some fingers on all the corners and, uh, I'll show you that process in just a little bit
All right, so seven layers, uh, carbon, peel ply, breather cloth, vacuum bag, and you see I've got these pleats in the corners. And that's just to give me some extra material. This is actually a stretch bag, so I don't really need it, but I want this thing to uh, have every available option it can as far as getting down in that crevice down there. And then I got my port here. So I'm just gonna line that thing up. And we'll kick this thing on. See that thing sucks it right to the mold. I may actually release it. Let's see. So you can see it's pulled it tight way down in here. And it's already starting to pull some of that resin out of it. So it's kind of creeping through that that uh, peel ply, the little I call it peel ply, it's actually release film, I guess. It's got little holes in it. It's gonna let that resin kind of seep through into this breather cloth. Check for leaks. Make sure we don't have any leaks anywhere. Looks pretty good. It's not, it's not letting go. If it had leaks, it would kind of start to let go. So that's all there is to it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'll actually flip it over and apply some heat to the bottom of this thing uh, in an effort to kind of get it to kick faster. The way that this particular resin is too, it is uh, the hotter you cure it, the more temperature resistant it is once, once it's in use. So I mean, with that thing being out in the open, I don't see really it getting too hot, but you know, the more heat it can withstand, the better, I think. Good morning, sunshines. It is the next morning, uh, nice and early. It's been about 12 hours. This thing started to kick yesterday about two hours in, so it should be nice and hard. Feels like it's good. So, it's time. It's time to pull it out and see if all that work was worth it. Uh, I know that I'm going to have a little bit of a problem down here in the very tip of this thing. I've seen the fibers kind of separating on that first layer. Uh, hopefully it's not too noticeable. Um, other than that, I think it'll probably be in pretty decent shape. So we'll just uh, rip this vacuum bag off. We'll see if we can't pry this thing out of this mold and kind of take a look at it. Um, maybe even kind of get it cleaned up a little bit. So there it is with all the vacuum bag and uh, release ply and, and the uh, breather cloth, all that stuff taken out of here. And you can kind of see how it does. It just, that white right there is the breather cloth. It just soaked up all that extra resin and actually made like a, almost like a fiberglass material out of it. And I'll tell you what, that was a pain to get out. I didn't think it'd be that hard for whatever reason. It was super tough. So anyway, I'm very happy with it so far. Obviously, I, all this stuff's got to be cleaned up. Um, it looked like it took the mold really well, though, which is what you're after. Um, super, super tough as well. And then what I did is I just took uh, the air hose. I just slid that thing up underneath here and then gave it a blast of air and it just popped it right out of this mold. So that's what you're looking like on the top side. 
really, really happy with it. I actually thought that I'd have some issues up in here, uh, as well as some of this stuff on the face, but uh, it turned out really, really good. Very, very minimal pinholes. I actually thought I'd have more trouble with pinholes as well. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I was kind of afraid I was gonna be doing a second, a second take on this thing. So then the true test. Make sure the ring fits, right? So we're gonna fasten that thing to the billet piece over there. So that's kind of what it's gonna look like with the ring on it. Spacing looks good, everything looks good. So what I'll do next is I'll just come in here, I'll kind of trim this a little bit big because what I want to do is I want to sand everything flush when it's all together. Well, the other thing I got to figure out, which I already know how I'm going to do it, I just have to do it, is um, I got to mount this throttle body. So, yeah, that's a, even though it's not trimmed, you kind of get an idea of something like that. All right, guys, there you go. Homemade carbon fiber intake. I mean, it's not the easiest thing to do, but it's not something that you can't do. So, you know, you. Spend a little bit of money, get your feet wet, play with some carbon fiber, um, you know, and as you kind of learn how it, how it works and some of the techniques, you can kind of move up into bigger, bigger parts. Uh, like I said, I've only done a couple of these. It wasn't that tough for me. I figured it out. As I mentioned before, I'll drop you some links of all the supplies and stuff that I've got. You can kind of go look at them and see what it is. Um, none of it's terribly expensive. The resin's probably the most expensive or the carbon, depending on how much you need. All right, well, I think that's it. As always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more next week. Go do work, son.